week has gone by. We are making it do what it do. Come on, y'all. Hey, the sun's not shining today, but it feels so good outside. I just know it's because of Tropical Storm Sally. Hey, things are not too bad. Come on, I'm going to tell y'all like I do every week. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be in front of you all. And we're going to make this thing happen like we always do. Thank you. That's right. Guess what? You are rolling with Ramsey. Come on now. Wow. Yes, another week has gone by, and I am happy everybody is here. Uh, people are going to start tuning in here shortly, and, and I love it because they are. Come on now. <laughs> hey, lady, you are definitely rolling with Ramsey. She said, it's cold. It's cold here, Chuck. What up? Hey, I'm just happy you guys are safe, and I want to say this right now. To everyone who's been affected or is being affected by now Tropical Storm Sally, Guys, please stay safe. Please, please stay safe. Heed your warnings in your area. If they're telling you that you need to leave, you need to stay inside, particularly the flash floods that may be happening uh, in the southeast Alabama and Georgia area. Let, let me tell you, Mother Nature never loses. Jamie, come on now. You are rolling with Ramsey. I see you. Uh, Mother Nature never, never loses. So I really want you to heed your warnings, hunker down, stay safe, because uh, I love everybody. And uh, I'm praying for everybody in that area because that storm is, is slow moving. Um, oh, wow. A uh, few quick things here. Uh, I want to want to give a somber shout out to a friend of Rolling with Ramsey, uh, Karen. Uh, Karen O, oh, I'm just going to say it like this because I want to respect her privacy, but she lost her father. Uh, and she's down there in Alabama, uh, right there at Tiffin Motorhomes, in a wonderful customer service, a wonderful person who helps people out. And we just want to let you know that we're praying for you and your family in this, in this somber time. Um, we know that when the Lord calls anybody home, they're, they're in a much better place. Um, that being said, this week, guys, listen, love, relationships, and communication. That's what I want to talk about today. Today's going to be a very interactive show. You guys know that things happen. Um, the young lady who was going to be on with me today, I was going to be talking to, uh, some schedules changed in her family, and so she wasn't able to make it on today. But guess what? The show must go on. Come on now. The show must go on. Hey, break a leg. That's okay. Uh, I, I can handle it. Uh, love relationships and communication. Uh, I, I would tell you, Hey, Gina, you're rolling with Ramsey. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, you guys can, uh, help me do this because the more you all are in the room and watching and we can have this conversation together. Um, I I'm noticing a trend and, and I will say that I'm noticing a trend. And when I say a trend, I'm noticing this trend that, uh, I love social media, just like the next person. Roland Ramsey wouldn't be able to grow if if we didn't have Facebook, like we're streaming live on Facebook right now. If I didn't have the Instagram page where you guys could follow the Instagram page. If hey, if you couldn't watch the uh, interviews on YouTube, uh, for that matter, we even got a Twitter page now. And so I love social media and how it can be used. But at the same time, I'm noticing a trend on social media how it is starting to fill a void within people. Uh, when I say within people, I'm going to say within men and women. I'm not just going to, uh, I'm going to try to make sure that I straddle the fence today and not lean too, too far to one side or the other. And when I say fill that void, I, I, I notice, and, and a lot of people will say, look, look, my posts are just for entertainment, this, that, and the other. Uh, don't take any of it seriously. Uh, it's just jokes. But here's what here's what I've noticed. I watch trends and I watch history. So if you see someone constantly posting negative comments or negative things about relationships, per se, it makes me wonder, are they happy in a relationship or were they ever able to be happy within a relationship? And for that matter, where is their thought process, thought process and mindset when it comes to being in a relationship? 
are they capable? Are they ready? Do they really want what they post in their memes about what they want and desire? Because if it shows up and it's at the front door and it's like, hey, here I am, and they're not ready, that tells me a lot. It tells me a lot. It tells me a person may be still broken. They may be still going through a healing process from a bad breakup or something like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, uh, I, I will tell you, nothing wrong with that at all. It, it's just funny to me that the trends these days are that there are no, there, there are not a lot of good men left. Like they're all gone. Like 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 there's if you go to the the, the shelf in the store of relationships and looking for good men is it, a hey, uh, on back order, which I think is funny. Uh, I like to do a little experiment right now. So I, I'll tell people because I know there's probably more people listening and they're going to be listening when this goes onto the podcast. So I want to say it like this. Here's the test. I'd like you to go to your Facebook page. If you have Facebook, go to your timeline and start scrolling down your timeline. And as you scroll down your timeline, I want you to just like mentally start a clock and see how long you scroll before you run into a negative post pertaining to men. Whether it's just be a negative post, whether they're men aren't, they're no good men, uh, they're just deadbeats, whatever. Just a negative post when it comes to men and see how long it takes you before you run into that post. Now, I I'm tying this and I'm going somewhere with this. So y'all work with me. You know, after serving in the military for 23 years, flying helicopters, um, uh, I had a lot of special training. And one of those schools that I went to was SEER school, uh, survival, escape, escape uh, and resistance and evasion, escape and evasion and resistance training. And, and you learn about psychological warfare during this training. You learn about this stuff, uh, the things that could happen to you. They want to prepare you for it. They want to give you the tools to overcome it. And I know for a fact there are many studies out there about how uh, – many hours and people spend on social media. But I'm telling you that if you're on, let's just, we'll just, since we're on Facebook, if you're on Facebook and you're getting a steady dose of negative things about relationships, you don't realize that every time you see it, whether you want to believe this or not, it is affecting your psyche. Every time you see it, you can say, oh, I'm just on it for a little bit. Oh, I'm only only for an hour a day or whatever. Well, right now they're saying that the average American adult uh, spends, believe it or not, this is going to sound crazy, five, sometimes five to seven hours of their day interacting, engaging on Facebook. It might not be actively, but almost a full work day where you're just checking or whatever or posting or liking something. Um, and I'm telling you, so if you're in the process of doing that and you're running across something that is a constant, it's a seed that is being planted over and over and over again. And that will affect your psyche when it comes to relationships. Y'all can chime in and make comments and let me know whether you agree with me or not. But I believe that to be true. Um, just as uh, you swing to the other end of the spectrum where you see people posting positive things with positive messages and so forth. And if they're posting those positive things with positive messages, um, that being said, it, it really, it really allows people to, um, I want to say change up their, their thought process. If there's a negative person in there and they're becoming more positive at that point in time, um, that, that will be, that will be a good thing, but we've got to be able to understand too, that things can go in the opposite direction. They can't um, go in the opposite direction of being negative per se. Now, like I said, I'm going to straddle the fence today. I'm not going to stay on one side. I want to make sure that um, I, I, I try to be like Switzerland when it comes to it today. Um, relationships, uh, love and communication. Any relationship. You, we know whether it's girlfriend, boyfriend, this, that, and the other, we have to have good communication. Uh, um, and that's, that's just a fact. There has to be a level of communication that's almost next level. 
almost a not just transparent communication, but I want to say a transcendent communication. What do I mean when I say that? Um, almost to a, to the point uh, to a degree of where you know uh, what your significant other, how they think, uh, what they what they're possibly where their mindset may be at, because you're being uh, very empathetic to whatever the situation may be, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, you got to be able to understand that. You've got to be able to say, hey, okay, I'm uh, going to make sure that, yes, I make my point, but at the same time uh, that I, I try to understand the other person's or at least see and feel the other person's point of view. Um, that will make a good foundation for a strong relationship. Um, uh, communication is going to always be the key. Now, guess what? When we say communication, um, let's break it down. You know, I, I grew up in, I grew up watching my parents communicate effectively uh, by, by talking to one another. Uh, nowadays, uh, we're talking about text, voicemail, email, and, and I said it, Roland, Ram, Roland with Ramsey came about because I wanted to bring people together to have healthy conversations, um, whether I agree with them or not, uh, primarily due to the fact that, guess what? I believe that we have stopped talking to each other. As a whole, America, we've stopped talking. And if America has stopped talking, there's a trickle-down effect. Um, Next thing you know, in our relationships, we're not talking to each other, but we're talking at one another. And that's a recipe. That's a recipe for disaster. If we're talking at each other and not talking to each other. Come on now. You guys are rolling with Ramsey today. Um, you know, everybody desires. Janet Jackson said it best. Everybody has a need to feel special. Everybody does. Who doesn't? Everybody wants to be wanted, desired, loved appreciated by their significant other, by their mate, whether that be husband and wife, husband and husband, wife and wife, whatever. Any relationship you're in, no matter how that relationship may look, these things still reign true. Still got to have great communications to build a good foundation for a relationship. You know, because love is a funny thing. The romantic feelings of love uh, will often get us in situations where we want to believe in that fairy tale. You want to be able to have um, the foundation that's rock solid, that can be held together with love and communication. Love can get you there. You can plant a seed of love, but then it's got to be watered with communication and you'll build a rock solid relationship. That's, I mean, this is just, hey man, it's just Chuck talking today. But I believe that. I believe that if you don't communicate your feelings, uh, particularly if you're in a situation where you don't like a particular thing, um, you've got to be able to communicate that. You've got to be able to um, express that in a way that where um, you're understood. And so I'll say this, there comes a time and not just relationships, but in effective communication where you have to seek understanding rather than being understood. Let me say that again. You've got to seek understanding rather than being understood. Now, to be able to do that, you have to have a level of empathy that a lot of people just don't have. 
by nature, we are selfish. Coming out of the wound, when we are born, we are selfish. We're crying. We want our mother. We want their attention. We want their love. A lady said that it is easier said than done. You are absolutely right. When I tell y'all a lady is like, uh, one of my best friends, her and her husband, my big brother, Robert Austin, wherever he is at today, maybe he's somewhere listening. Um, I have seen it. I have seen effective communication. And this is a woman who's been married for many years. How many years has it been, Alayda? Uh, let me know. Uh, and she said that it is easier said than done. But well, what, I, what I will say is this. Is that if you hang in there and you truly love someone, um, you learn to effectively communicate in a very unique way. They've been married 34 years and counting. My best friends. They've known me over 25 plus years. My best friends. Been married 34 years and counting. And when I tell you, I've seen them communicate effectively. I've seen them communicate effectively. But I've also watched that communication grow over the years. I've watched it grow. I've watched them interact. I've seen them now understand after 34 years that their communication is not all verbal. It could be a sound. It could just be a look. Because <laughs> trust me, my big brother, Robert Austin, has some, some crazy looks. But... Um, they know what that's like. They, they, they are a lion and a lioness that dance their dance. And they dance it well. And guess what? They have a loving marriage that is watered with communication and love. Tell me if I'm wrong, Alayda, but I know that is to be true. And guess what? You all know that I'm a man of faith. And guess what? It is grounded in God. Now I'm not going to condemn. I'm not going to condemn uh, or or condemn anybody's faith, uh, whether no matter what what your religious practice may be. But you got to have a higher power and believe in something something in there. Um, and when you have those components, uh, you you can't go wrong. When you have those components, you can't go wrong, because when I tell you, uh, when I look. Or I think about an example of a marriage or a relationship that I desire to have in my life. Um, Robert and Alayda Austin are only second to my parents. And so I, I've known them for many years. We served, I served with a husband for many years in the military. And, and I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm watching a family that is full of love at the end of the day. But. I also watch a family that is a full of full of effective communication, full of parents, children, cousins, grandparents, all of which are effective communicators. There is no one in the Austin household who does not know how to speak up for themselves and say what they mean and mean what they say. Now, guess what? We all get better over time. So children grow and they get wiser and wiser and wiser and it gets better over time. But if that's what they see from the beginning, that's what they express. Um, and so that transcendent, that, that, that trickles down. And you learn at the end of the day that one, one, of, the the, one of the key components that you have to have within yourself to be one half of a relationship, there's a couple of things you got to be able to do. Y'all hear me on this. A couple of things you got to be able to do. One, you got to be able to love yourself. Because if you got to love yourself before you can love anybody else. That's number one. Got to be able to love yourself. Two, second thing you got to understand is this you 
are responsible for your own happiness. You cannot count on someone else to make you happy. They can enhance your happiness. They can they can uh, be the icing on that cake. But they can't be the cake. You have to you're responsible for your own happiness. Someone else can they can enhance it and make it better and they can just make everything joyful. But at the end of the day, you've got to be able to love yourself and understand that you're responsible for your own happiness. If you can remember those two things. You'll be OK. Now, guess what? On a on a on a sidebar, one A, what I said, one, you got to be able to love yourself. So one A in loving yourself. Guess what you have to know? You have to know your worth. You got to be able to love yourself, know your worth as one A, and then two, understand that you're responsible for your own happiness. If you can love yourself, know your worth, and know that you're responsible for your own happiness, I can't make my mate happy. Oh, I want to be with you. You make me so happy. No, you're responsible for your happiness. And then guess what? That allows you to free up that expectation and that responsibility from your significant other. Because if your significant other is constantly trying to figure out what he or she needs to do to make you happy, then guess what they do? They run out. Their cup doesn't overflow. If what happens is their cup ends up being empty because they're constantly giving. They're constantly giving. They're giving of themselves. They're giving to other people. They're giving of themselves so much that they don't have anything left for themselves and they will find themselves drained, frustrated, and disgusted. And then that starts chipping away at any foundation in any relationship that you may have had. So you have to understand that. You have to say, hey, yes, I'm in a relationship with this person. I understand their likes and dislikes. And there's a lot of things that I can do to make this relationship go and, and to make it great. But one of the things that I cannot do is, is I can't make her happy or I can't make him happy. If it's a female saying this, I can't make him happy. Individuals have to know that they're responsible for their own happiness. I can enhance it. I can be a part of the toppings that go on top, the sprinkles on the ice cream. But I can't be the ice cream. That's too much. That's that's too much to put on one person. It's too much. Even in a marriage, that's too much. For a mother to be able to give as much love as a mother gives. She has to know that she naturally loves herself. Continuously overflowing. Overwhelmingly love herself enough to be able to share that love, to be able to give pour into her husband, pour into her children. Pouring to her community, pouring to her extended family. My mother, may she rest in peace, Dr. Gloria B. Ramsey. My mother was a mother figure to so many. I shared my mom with all of her students because she was an educator. And she didn't just teach one generation. There's sometimes where she taught generations of families. And to this day, people call back, oh, I miss your mom and so much. And she did this and she did that. And I remember when I was a little kid, I wanted to be selfish at times. That was my mom. But what I started to learn and realize was as much as she gave other people, she always had something special. She always had something left for me. She never ran out. She never ran out. And I believe that she never ran out of being able to give love is because she knew who she was. She knew her worth and she more than loved herself. And then you topple that with knowing that you put you, you, you put something on top of that. She loved God. So you put all those combinations together and she was able to do uh, 
how can I say it? She was able to operate in her purpose. Able to operate in her purpose. I tell people all the time that love is a verb. It's an action. It takes action. It takes work. You gotta, it takes work. You got you to gotta work at it. But I also believe that love is a choice. Love is a choice. I believe that people can choose to love. You can choose not to love. Now, here's the key. You can choose to be in love as well. I believe that. Now, guess what? You say, oh, man, the romantic feelings. Oh, I fell in love with this person. I believe whether you, whether you understand it or not, you either consciously or unconsciously made a choice to fall in love. It's Chuck's opinion. I believe it to be true. It's a beautiful thing to be in love. Yes, it is. I believe you operate differently. You move differently. Um, when you're truly in love, you got a little bit of pep in your step, a little glide in your stride. Um, but those romantic feelings only last so long. They won't be the foundation of being able to hold the relationship together. To be able to hold it together, you've got to have communication. And if you have that transcendent and transparent communication continuously watered with love, now guess what? Now you're mixing up that cement. There it is. You're mixing up that cement. Okay, got a little water in there. Let's sprinkle some faith in there too. Sprinkle some faith in there. Let's sprinkle in the ability to listen in there. Come on, we're gonna build this, we're gonna build this recipe. We're gonna, we're gonna make this recipe called a relationship. That's what we're doing. The ability to listen, the ability to be empathetic, the ability to seek understanding rather than being understood. If you sprinkle all those things in, you can have a loving relationship full of healthy communication. That's what you'll have. But like a later said, after 34 years of a loving marriage, it is easier said than done. So what am I saying? They'll say, hey, man, Chuck, what are you saying? I'm saying that relationships take work. It's take work. We're in a, right now, we got a generation of youth who, who are instantaneous. They don't want to put in the work. They don't understand that 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 the reason because the reason that granddaddy and big mama was able to stay together so long is because they put in work. They put in work. They understood some things. They knew how to re they knew how to respect one another. They put that work in. There was never any disrespectful things. If there's one thing I can tell you, I know for a fact that I never saw my mother disagree with my father in a disrespectful manner ever in, or, or, or just, just, she didn't, she didn't, how am I trying to say it? She didn't disagree with him or disrespect him in public. Um, so for instance, maybe they're out somewhere, they're at a function or something, and maybe my father's having a conversation and she's right there with him at the table or whatever, uh, with friends. And maybe she doesn't agree with the statement that he's made, um, in a conversation or something. She didn't just blatantly, I never watched her blatantly just, no, oh, I don't agree with you. They were a team. Now, guess what? When they got together and they were alone, I'm sure she expressed how she felt, but she understood being able to have a united front. There are certain things and certain conversations that are just 
supposed to be between you and your significant other. Now in this age of social media, guess what? People are expressing their feelings, good, bad, or indifferent on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And they might be upset about something, so they put out this ominous tweet with a meme expressing how they're feeling. Because they know their significant other is going to see it and it's going to get a reaction. When all they should have done was say, hey, can we talk? I didn't like how you were chewing your cornflakes this morning. And it really bothers me when you do it, to be honest with you. I know you've been chewing them that way your entire life. But I would greatly appreciate it if you would try to do it a different way. As opposed to putting up a post. Has anybody ever chewed their cornflakes with their mouth open? Isn't that the most irritating thing? Now, wow, if you if you get that particular about something and you know someone is going to see it, they're going to know it's going to speak to them. That's not good, healthy communication. That's an ambush. That's what that is. That's an ambush. That's an ambush on a foundation that you've either built or that you're trying to build. I have an idea. If you're in a healthy relationship, whether you're just dating uh, or married, just a suggestion. Maybe you guys take a couple of days a week if you got social media accounts and say, you know what? We're going to log off on Tuesday and Thursday and not be on social media at all on those days and focus back on each other. It's a thought, huh? A lot of people don't understand what it even means to, to date anymore. Now I get it. We're in the midst of COVID-19. So dating and stuff like that is looking a little different. But I know one thing, and ladies, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Men, listen up. The things you did to get her in your life. Those are the things that you're going to have to do to keep her in your life. You've got to have consistency. You've got to continuously date your mate. Even after you get married. Continue to date your wife. You got to do that. You got to do that. Now, ladies, continue to appreciate your man. I'm a believer that being spoiled works both ways. You get what you give. But men, listen up. If we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, if you're being old fashioned, so to speak. And what I mean by that is, is if you are opening doors, Wallace Bridges, I see you, you're rolling with Ramsey. If you're opening doors, holding, pulling out the chair for your significant other, if you're keeping the car full of gas, if the car is clean, keeping the car washed, simple things like that are appreciated because guess what? Hey, this is what my, my father, Charles Sr. told me. That's what a man is supposed to do. If you are with a woman and she stops because she needs gas in the car and you sit in the car while she gets out and she pumps the gas, shame on you. Now, guess what? Ladies, for my, I want to remember, see if I can get all the letters right. For my LGBTQ community, it is different. Obviously, if you are in a same-sex marriage, woman with woman, man with man, there's a choice, obviously. Y'all understand where I'm coming from. Somebody's got to pump it. But guess what? In that relationship, 
you all know whose role that is. So y'all feel where I'm coming from with that. Because I respect everybody's relationships, no matter how it may look. Um, and so all I'm saying is if you're doing all the things that you're supposed to do in just some of the everyday things and taking care of your mate, then guess what? Things will fall into place. You'll get spoiled. I believe that. I believe that. But guess what? Now, ladies, if you have a man who is working a 12 hour job and he's he's keeping the bills paid and he's doing all those things, he's keeping food in the house and all those things. I'm sure he deserves to come home to a home a cooked meal. Now, guess what? We're in an age where, where two people work. But every now and then, you still got to make that man feel special and appreciate it. You got to do that. You, you got to do that. You guys are rolling with Ramsey. You all can listen to the Rolling with Ramsey podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and guess what? iHeartRadio. Come on now. And you can watch these interviews that I'm doing in these live streams on the YouTube channel. Make sure that you are liking, following, and subscribing. A lady told me to say that again. And I, and I will. If you're doing all the things that you need to be able to doing uh, at to, for your significant other, working really hard, taking care of them, um, doing the little things, things will fall into place. Now, there's a component of that. There's a component of that. Let me just be a realist here. We are in very unique times, almost perilous times. And even when the times were good before COVID hit, this still applies what I'm about to say. You still have to encourage your mate. And what I mean by that is whether they're in school, whether they're trying to get a new job or they're going for a promotion, if they're, you know, having problems on their jobs and they're frustrated, you've got to be able to encourage your significant other to hang in there. Let them know that you love them and you see them working hard. And guess what? It's going to pay off. Because if they're at work and they're dealing with frustration all day at work, no one wants to come home to deal with more frustration. No one wants to come home to a house where they feel like they're not appreciated. No one wants to come home to a house where it is just full of turmoil and drama. That's a recipe for disaster. That's a recipe for infidelity. That's what that's a recipe for. Appreciation is big. Now, guess what? There's a great book that's out there, and I'm sure a lot of people have read it called The Five Love Languages. They say that we have these different love languages. They do. They say that we have these different love languages, uh, gifts, Acts of service, physical touch, quality time, gifts, acts of service, physical touch, quality time. Uh, can somebody help me out with the last one? Gifts, acts of service, physical touch, quality time. There's one more. I'm struggling. Somebody help me out. Um, there's these five love languages. And the point that I'm going to make is this. is Everybody has, has their love languages. And they say, hey, my top love language may be quality time. My top love language may be physical touch. Because guess what? Two people can love each other and be speaking different languages. And if they're speaking different languages, guess what? They pass each other like two ships passing in the night. They don't even know each other is there. They don't even know each other is there. And so all I'm saying is, is that once you figure out what your love language is, you have to be able to let your significant other know that. Because guess what? That's like giving them, you know, that's giving them ammunition. Because you may be frustrated because you're like, wow, your significant other may be saying, well, you know what? I, 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 fixed, I fixed dinner. I cleaned the house. 
The house is real clean. I'm cooking. Uh, I'm washing the clothes. They're, they're, they're folded and they're put away. Why is none of that enough? When maybe your mate appreciates all of that, they appreciate all of that. And you're thinking in your mind, he should love me because I'm doing all of those things. He loves you, but that may not be his love language because everything that I just said, I believe falls under an act of service. Those are acts of service. But what if the love language of your mate is quality time? He can say, you know what? I, I appreciate all of that that you did. And I'm so thankful and grateful that you did all of that. Come, come sit and, and watch a movie with me. And that may pour love into that individual that you thought was being poured in by you doing all that other stuff. Not that you should stop doing that stuff, but that may not be the love that, that needs to be poured in. That two hour movie or hour and a half movie may pour more love in than all that other stuff because that's that individual's love language. Hear me now. If y'all disagree, tell me. It's okay. But I'm telling you, that's what I'm thinking. You have to know. You have to ask questions. Hey, it's not about just what do you like to do. What makes you feel good? What's your love language? It might be, it might be, um, it, it might be to a point or a degree of, You saved up and you surprised them with some new shoes they had been looking at. Or you buy them a car or something. Their love language may be gifts. And there's nothing wrong with that. Or it could be acts of service. Hey, honey, I saw where uh, your clothes needed to be taken to the cleaners. So I just, where, where, where's that pile out over here? I took them to the cleaners for you already. Oh, wow. Thank you, honey. Man. You know what, honey? You cook every day. Don't worry about it this weekend. I'm going to be cooking. Matter of fact, I, I, I'm, I'm cooking this week. Take a break. Maybe acts of service. We've got to be willing to dig a little deeper. And that's, 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 that's that next level transcendent communication. The transparency part of that communication is being able to express it. Hey, and you got to be able to express it in a manner where you're not the hurting your mate's feeling or your significant other's feelings. So, hey, listen, I really appreciate everything that you're doing. But I need to express to you how important it is that we're able to spend some quality time together. Where, where we put our phones down, where we put them on silent, and, and we just talk to each other. Or we listen to some soft music and we, you, I, I get you a glass of wine and I get what I need. And, and, we, just, and, we, and we take that time uh, to be able to communicate. Yeah, you got to be able to do that. I'm telling you, you've got to be able to do that. You got to be able to do that. And so, you know, when you're able to do that, that's a beautiful thing. That's called being able to have next level communication. That's called being able to be, uh, that's a transformational relationship. And when I say that, because guess what? Your relationship starts to transform when time goes by. Time goes by. Particularly, you know, into 
like my my aunt Elsie uh, was on earlier, and I forgot to give her a shout out. Aunt Elsie, I see you. You're rolling with Ramsey, and when I say that, uh, uh, I mean that transformational as time. And when I say time, when you transition from dating to engagement to marriage to to months to years. I, I watch my aunt and uncle finish each other's sentences. I'm sure Robert in a later Austin does the same thing. I know my mother and father did the same thing. That's a transformational relationship where the two are truly becoming one. They know each other. They do. But to get there, you got to put in that work. You've got to stop talking at one another and you've got to start talking to one another. You just have to. Now, I'm going to go back and I'm going to say it again. Everybody has a need to feel special. Everyone does. Who doesn't want to be wanted and desired by their significant other? Who doesn't? Who doesn't? Everybody does. There is a chemical reaction in the body that only love can bring out. A level of endorphins that come from knowing that you're getting that love. It can come from words, a look. It can come from being hugged physically. But to get to that point, you got to be able to work. You got to be able to work. And guess what? We're not just talking about from the man's standpoint. We're talking about the both sides. This is both men and women. You've got to be able to put in work for one another. You've got to be able to put in that type of work. And when you know what that feels like and you get that feeling, you want it. You want it even more. You're like, man, this feels good. How can I feel this way again? How can I get him to make me feel this way again? How can I get her to make me feel this way again? What did I do cause and effect wise to be able to get this feeling? I'm going to go back to the basics. Debbie, I see you rolling with Ramsey. She says all that work pays off. Yes, indeed, it does. I'll go back to the basics, though. You got to have a foundation built with transparent and transcendent communication that changes and is a foundation of a relationship that will change into and help grow into a transformational relationship. Facts. Now, I'm telling you right now, the reason why, if you're watching TV and you're watching these celebrities and so forth and things like that, and, and you keep up with the gossip column, you know, and you, if you're in the checkout aisle in the, in, the, in the grocery store and you look at the Inquirer and you see what people are splitting up and so and so's getting a divorce from so and so and this, that, and the other, that's because they tried to put their relationship in a microwave. They wanted to say, well, he's got money, she's got money, they come together, it's supposed to work. No. They put it in the microwave for about two minutes and thought that they were going to be able to get that transformational relationship, and it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. I'm telling you right now, the song you've been hearing today, today's featured song by the artist QB Smith is called By Love. 
It's been playing in the background today as I came on and so forth. And you all are going to hear it. It's called by love. And part of the lines of the song, he says, everybody's got a price to pay. Man, when y'all come back and listen to this after the edits are done, you're going to hear this song. And I'm telling you, he says, everybody's got a price to pay. Closed mouth, don't get a plate. Come on now, I'm telling you, can't buy love. You can't put it in a microwave and think you can zap it and get that long loving effect that we've seen the older generation have. No. It takes work. And it's not about the money. You're absolutely right, Brian. You're rolling with Ramsey. You're absolutely right. It can't be about the money. Two people have to come together and they've got to be able to cultivate one another to be ultimately better people. If you have a desire for your mate to be a better person and you want to help them grow and you all grow together, that's 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 getting in in the weeds and that's getting down and cultivating that soil in the garden and putting some fertilizer in there so that you can guess what? So it can blossom into this loving, fruitful relationship that we all want and desire. I haven't beat anybody bad up to up. I haven't beaten anybody up too bad today. Male or female, man or woman. Come on now, I have it. There are good men out there. There are bad men out there. There are good women out there. There are bad women out there. Come on, Brian, I remember who you are. We were up there at Four Corners, brother. Come on now. Um... And I'm telling you, you got to be able to make sure that you put in, put in, put in that work. And if you put in that work, guess what you're able to do? You're able to have a relationship that will blossom, grow someone that wants to help you be a better you. Because I'll tell you, I need I, I need a mate who's going to be able to squeeze my arm or kick me under the table because I may be talking too much. I'm honest. I'm honest. You know, I, if I'm closing a business deal, I may, I may be on the verge of have closed the deal and be done talk my way right out of the deal because I may have blinders on. I may be too focused, laser focused. And that's when having a mate, I'm telling you, they can say, Hey, okay, you know what? It's not about, uh, uh, making you look bad, but just a nudge or whatever to kind of reel you back in. Debbie says, I agree. She says, we're at 42 years and it ain't been easy, but it's been worth it. Amen. Way to go, Debbie. 42 years, Miss True Blood, her and her husband have been married. Alayda just told me, she said, both parties must respect each other uh, as well as the relationship. Amen. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And when I can tell you that, guess what? There are valleys. You know, there's highs and lows. So you got your mountain peaks and then you got your valleys. So it's like a roller coaster ride. It's ups and downs. But you got to ask your question. You got to ask yourself a question. And you all hear me when I say this. It's like a roller coaster ride. When you got your ticket to get on the ride. It's one that you honestly, if you if you bought your ticket earnestly and everything is not going to be perfect, but you got to you got to have the courage to stay on the ride. Debbie, 42 years, a later, 34 years and counting, they stayed on the ride because I bet you if I asked either one of them. Like, like, like Debbie said, it ain't all been easy. Nobody said that it was going to be easy. 
but they stayed on the ride. And she says it's worth it. Debbie said, hey, you are better together or you are, are you better, better together or apart? And she says, and she was asking the question, are you better together or apart? And she says, we're better together. And it's funny because I was looking at one of my old soldiers and um, I don't know if I saw a post where he put where where he had gotten divorced um, from his wife. And guess what? They ended up getting remarried. They were separated for some time, but they ended up getting married because they just operated better together. Life was much better when they were together. You know that old saying, we always talk about the grass is being greener on the other side. But guess what? Nah. When you find that one person that gives you that, that helps you find that joy within yourself. Because remember I told you, you're responsible for your own happiness. So find that joy within yourself and you're a more joyful person. You find it within yourself and you're able to give that back and reciprocate it. And it's just a good thing going round and round. Man, sit down together, write out your goals, figure out where you where you want that ride to take you. And I promise you. And, and, and this is coming from me, and I promise you. If you do that. And you have that transparent. Transcendent communication. Watered and cultivated in love. You'll find what you're looking for. Brian just said they've been married for 22 years. That's awesome, brother. And I'm telling you. You can't microwave your relationships. You've got to be able to put in work. And guess what? If you work hard at it, you'll be able to play hard at it. You guys have been rolling with Ramsey this week. I love all of you all. Next week, and I know it's crazy, but next week is going to be about oral hygiene. That's right. We're going to be talking about our teeth next week. You know, I talk about everything on here. And with everything that's been going on with this pandemic, I'm going to have on next week a Dr. Keith McDonald is going to be on next week. Dr. Keith McDonald of Triad Cosmetic Dentistry is going to be on next week. Brian said, if you put hard work in together, you get uh, what you put in it. You get what you put into it. That's right. You're absolutely right, Brian. Um, Dr. Keith McDonald of Triad Cosmetic Dentistry is going to be on next week. And so I'm telling you, in the midst of the, the pandemic, He's going to be talking about preventive care and all of these things because what I was learning with from him, and he's a really cool dentist, guys. He's going to come on. He's going to answer all your questions. And what I was learning from him is that, guess what? Your oral hygiene, and there's things about your teeth that can affect other parts of your body. And a lot of people don't know that. They think it's just up here in their mouths and the jaw and the pain. Oh, I got a toothache, this, that, and the other, and it doesn't cause me a headache or it's not causing me eye problems or other things. Yes, they can. Uh, but we're going to be talking about oral hygiene next week, and it's a really cool dentist. Uh, I can't wait to have him on next week. But this has been a blast being able to talk to all of you all about love, relationships, and communication this week. I hope you all enjoyed the show today. Um, Real quick before I get out of here, like I always do, I want to give a mad shout out to my man, Joel, in the Philippines of Edit Your Videos Now. And my little brother from another mother, mother the artist QB Smith. And today's song, featured song, has been Buy Love on his album, Hymns. Hey, you can't buy love. You can't put it in a microwave. Um, you've got to put in that work. I love all of you all. And guess what? Hmm. I love you. God loves you. And there's nothing you can do about it. You all have been, guess what? This week, rolling, rolling, rolling with, with Rams. Rams. Peace. I'll see you guys next week. <laughs>